There we go. That's much better. You look fantastic. Thank you. You look I, like was, I, I look. work on this. I, I spend a lot of time and money on this. Yeah. Okay. You look homeless, but you homeless. Know, that's okay. Well, I mean, you got all that, you know, stuff going on in the background. Well, I'm in the bunker. Okay. I'm what? coming to you <laughs> live again from the bunker deep below HQ for BRLS. Okay. We only come down here in, in nuclear events. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, well, welcome lunatics. It is Friday, June the 2nd, and uh, Larry's broadcasting from the bunker, and I'm broadcasting from out on the hill. Let me see if that, that light is a little jacked up. There. Oh, that's better. Um, <clears throat> I've got something to share with you I think you'll like. Uh, next Friday is my daughter's 17th birthday, and so there, as we speak, they are traveling about there are four vehicles, about 20 teenagers on a scavenger hunt. And me and the youngin went and hid all these clues. And, yeah. and I think you're going to appreciate this one clue. Are mm -hmm. you ready? Yeah. In a town named after a force of nature's might, don't be afraid. It will be all right. Head to a place where comfort awaits. Blank by blank opens its gates. Seek the lobby where check-ins are done in a place where relaxation has just begun. Find a ribbon of blue, it'll guide your way. A sign of excellence, don't delay. Near this mark of honor, your clue shall unveil the next step of your hunt, which stories to tell. I know exactly where that is. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, I the took, wind, that's the wind gate by Wyndham. So <laughs> I hurricane. took our okay. banner, our, yeah. our banner that has our faces on it, yeah, and yeah. I, ta I taped their clues to the pole uh, in the back okay. of that and put that in the lobby. So well, That's cute. Um, and 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 we did we one hundred percent did not write that. I got that from Chat GPT. Okay, I so, thought it was I thought it was too good for you. So oh, it's one hundred percent too good for me. When can we um, get Chat GPT Chat GPT to just take over this podcast? Well, we, I, we can retire. I, I, I might be okay with that. Um, that AI stuff is pretty fast. <clears throat> it is. So we are live again on TikTok and. YouTube. I've got my hillbilly redneck apparatus set up here. We and now so, remember I have a term for this. Trimal trim, cast. trimal casting. Okay. That's we my, are trimal casting. Um, which I don't know. There's that's three. There's only two. I don't, you know, it's a simulcast. Well, it's one hundred percent. Aren't we on Facebook? Mm. I come try. On. Come I on, try IT my, guy. Come on. I, I try my best to forget that Facebook exists. It's basically there for you know memories to come back every morning just to let me see what happened on this day it's, it's between totally one and 14 years ago. You're, you're listen, you're, you're pissing off a big portion of your elderly audience. Okay. Yeah, well, that's still, that's still their main go-to. All right. So, okay. Boomer. Um, somebody saying we're choppy locking chopping. up. Huh? It's lagging well, a bit. Wow. Um, Is it everybody? If it's the, if it's all that, it's gotta be you. Leon says he's getting it choppy as well. Well, I hmm. don't know, y'all. Um, I'm getting Larry clear. Larry, are you getting me clear? Absolutely. Crystal. Huh. Well, usually if there's a problem, find one out of us can on, see it. Find out if they're on TikTok or Facebook. I mean, or YouTube. TikTok is not saying, not, TikTok is not reporting any issues. Okay. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, let me let me pull up my phone here and let me look at it myself. Uh, Mr. Hudson, let me give you this uh, email again. This is for TikTok, okay? It's Larry or Chris, either one, at blueribbonlogistics.com. Larry at blueribbonlogistics.com or Chris at blueribbonlogistics.com. That will get it here. Well, I just pulled it up on my phone and I got zero, I got zero problems. Now they, they're watching on YouTube, but I mean, hell, I'm looking right at it. And then Rocky's saying your audio is breaking up. I don't know. Uh, uh, it's bizarre. Like Cause I mean, looking at it right on my phone it's, and it's solar flares. I guess so. Um, well, <clears throat> I don't know. That's bizarre. Um, and I have, I mean, I have no way of, um, 
<laughs> Leon Trammell. <laughs> YouTube bad. <laughs> well, I don't know how to fix it. I'm guessing it might be Rocky. You've got Facebook. Go over to Facebook and see if it's doing it there. Um, I can do that too. Um, maybe it's a maybe it's a YouTube issue. I'm looking um, at Facebook right now, and I don't see a problem with it. Well, let me, let me watch it a little bit longer. Well, let me. I'm gonna pull it up on my phone again. Yeah, I don't. I don't see a problem with Facebook. No, I don't see a problem. We have a we have a grand total of two people on Facebook right now. It'd be me and Rocky. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um. Well, anyway, well, we're we're going to carry on. Um, I mean, it's looking good to me. Um, so I don't know if you guys are in a bad spot or to the Chinese or, you know. Um. Uh, anyway, switch, switch to TikTok. <clears throat> Here's well, somebody clearing good to go. TikTok is garbage. Tell them to stop giving it away to China. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh well let me hit this. Uh so on tick there's two things on TikTok. Um it's um uh, let's see, can they see yeah, it's not reversed. I'm gonna write this down. And show it to y'all. It's BRLS podcast at gmail.com. BRLS, like Blue Ribbon Logistical Solutions Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, and I know that works because I just got an email from it a little, little bit ago. Here, here's a great question on TikTok to get us started <laughs> Should I buy a new truck if I have no cash and no credit? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Join the party. Everybody else does. Um, yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> wow. Well, I, I did a, a TikTok today. Um, I found this comment, got it. It just came through Christopher. Um, I just got your email. Um, let me shut my mail down here. There was a comment. Someone was responding to a guy that had posted a video about using a very old truck for hot shotting, like a 2000 model Ford F three fifty or something. And the comment was, um, well, how can you use those old trucks? Don't they say we should get new stuff? And I, I, I wanted to pose the question, who is they? So if you want a theme for tonight's podcast, Spilly Built, let's talk about them and who they are. Because one of the most important, um, one of the most important questions that I ever learned to ask in my adult life is the question, who benefits? Doesn't matter what it is. And especially if someone is trying to use fear to influence you, ask the question, okay, well, who benefits if I do X, Y, or Z? Um, who benefits? Uh, and and what, what you'll generally find is the person that benefits is never you. It's, it's somebody else. And so as we, um, as we, you know, teach what we do here. Um, what we're, what we're wanting to do is, is put you in control and you're not in control when you sign up for a uh, four a thousand dollar a week lease payment. Uh, you're not in control, uh, when you can't take a day off, uh, because, um, you're bound, you're slave to this payment. And so they are the same people that say you have to dump perfectly good oil every 12,000 miles. And they are the ones that say, well, you can't, you don't, you, you, you don't use these tires and here's all the reasons. 
And, and they say, well, you can't drive an old truck because it'll break down all the time. And they say this and they say that. Well, I don't, I stopped listening to them a long time ago. Um, now guys, I, I still see, um, I still see you guys talking about issues with the, you know, somebody said they switched to Facebook and it's working great. Um, I have no idea because I, I cannot, I can't, somebody's like wizard this thing. I, I don't know what to do because all I'm doing is, is, is broadcasting and Larry's hearing me and I'm hearing him and I look at my phone and everything's fine. So I, I don't know what to tell y'all. Maybe try to refresh it. Something, I'm, close the I'm, app and restart it. I'm on, I'm looking at Facebook. I don't see a problem there. I've got YouTube going on my phone. I don't see a problem there. I don't see anything stopping I, I anywhere. I don't know. It just, it could be, um, uh, you know, just you're in a bad area or something. Um, I mean, if Facebook's getting it, YouTube's got to be getting it. So it's no, all coming from the not, my, fa my Facebook did just, uh, stop. I'm getting a blue circle I'm getting it right now. All right, let me do this. I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi because I usually do that and just go through the Ethernet. Um, maybe with all of these devices going, it's it's messing with my Wi-Fi. So I did switch that. I turned the Wi-Fi off on my Mac, and it's just going straight through the uh, straight through the Ethernet. So, well, let me. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and hit this comment. What I'm hoping is happening is that if the lag is going to catch up and on the replay, it'll be clear. Can y'all touch on why you like 05 to 07 Columbia century more than 99 to 04? Um, I can't. And it, and it's not, um, it's not really anything all that important. It's little tiny things. Okay. The cab structure has pretty much unchanged from 1997 i think when the century was introduced until 2012 or 13 when they stopped making them the the cab is almost identical what has changed and evolved from 99 up through 07 was the hvac system the heating and cooling um, I have found that the 05 or 04 to 07 is easier to manage when you're trying to keep drivers comfortable. It's, it's, a, it's just the design. Um, I prefer, even though I'm trying to exercise a demon out of one right now, I prefer the 14 liter EGR over the 12 seven because it's more power. It has a better Jake brake. Um, you know, yes, if I could just delete EGR and run a straight wastegate turbo on a 14 liter and put all kinds of power to ground, everything would be great. Unfortunately, we're not doing that. So my personal preference is the 05 to 07. I don't like 04. We have an 04. And it's a 12.7 with an EGR. And it is the gutless mm -hmm. wonder of the free world. 04, you've got, it's like a hybrid year. Yeah, that's the transition year. So you can get a, you can get a Columbia with a twelve seven that's that's non EG or that's that's EGR, and you can get a fourteen liter that's not EGR in 04. Mm -hmm. So you just yeah. gotta you gotta watch real careful there. To answer your question though, and and from a broader sp uh, perspective, they're both we would do. That's those are both of those trucks we would get, we would get. Those are lunatic trucks. It's just yeah. if we have two of them sitting there and they're both the same spec and they're both the same price. And everything's the same. We would take the 05 over 07, then no 904, just because there's some things in it that, that make it easier for us to work on. He was running OPS. I mean, it was a beautiful truck. Mm -hmm. It was aerodynamic. It had didn't have the cans on it, didn't have the side um, <clears throat> stacks on it. It had an air dam on top. Check, 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 check. Lunatic, lunatic, lunatic. As much as I love long frame, big hood trucks, you would think, okay, the 377 Peterbilt would be acceptable. And it pretty much is, except when it comes to the practicality of being able to find parts in a pinch. That still applies to the 99 to 07 Century Columbia over 
anything else over Max, over Volvos, over, um, over everybody, you know, it makes all the difference. And, and that practicality, um, when, when I'm, you know, I'm watching over 12 trucks now, you know, about to be 14 when something goes wrong, I owe it to the customer. I owe it to the driver. I own it to the truck owner to be able to get that truck repaired as quickly as possible. And if I'm running a, um, an anomaly truck, or if I'm running a truck like a 377 Pete, that's just going to be that margin more difficult to find parts for, you know, and that's where the FLD falls apart. You know, the, the <laughs> figuratively and literally, the FLDs are good, strong trucks, but finding parts for them. And most of the time it's like interior stuff. But my friend Dan uh, has a classic, you know, and he re literally built the engine himself. He's a gearhead guy. He builds muscle cars, but he's had to fabricate a lot of parts. Well, if, I'm not a fabricator, you know. No, he's um, a, our fabricators in the hospital right now. Right. Uh, although I've, I've taken some, some lessons and I've, and I've put some shit together. Um, uh, you know, um, Evans is Evans. Is it harder to find, uh, someone had an O one Columbia and had issues finding parts? Well, I <clears throat> don't, I don't have an issue finding parts. You know, I don't know that I could put that, that expertise to work with pack cars or, and internationals and other trucks. But when it comes to Freightliner, I have built a network. Um, and I can get whatever I need. Um, and, and, le and let me go back and restate this because I have to do this every week because people start coming on here and going, you, the only way you guys can th th uh, think people can be in business is to have an old truck. Remember our market here. Remember our audience. We coach first time owner operators who used to be company drivers buying their first truck. We just want to keep them in business long enough to where they can make enough money and save enough money to buy whatever, whatever they want, but pay cash for it. So we're, we're not, we're not anti any truck. We're anti a lot of trucks for first time owner operators because we're trying to minimize the risk so that they can stay in business. Um, so, uh, that's the reason that, that we, we want to do this. We're not, we're not saying that as an established owner operator with you got money in the bank. I mean, Chris's friend, he certainly can pay for whatever he wants to. He's got mm -hmm. no classic built the engine himself in his garage, built his own engine stand for it, you know? Uh, th that's not who we're talking about here. We're talking about the guy that, um, that called me today. Okay. Uh, that, um, you know, he, he, he wants to be a, 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 a BCO at Landstar. He got no money. Okay. So, you know, we, we, we just trying to keep people from making these stupid mistakes. Like the guy at the very beginning said, can I buy a truck if I got no money, no credit? Oh well, yeah. Well, you can't buy one. You can go lease one or you can go finance one and be in debt up to your ass, you know? I see. I saw a guy on Facebook today wanting to advice on where to go refinance his truck that he owed eighty thousand dollars on. Um, really? I mean, it just. It, 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 I, listen. Let, let's talk about something else here, okay? We we've been thinking that the next six months are going to kind of maybe things are going to turn a little bit, but it's not looking that like that. I mean, Landstar's come out with their May adjustment, and they're not they're they're adjusting their their expectations down. Uh, things I'm reading are going to be that guys. I don't know that we're at the bottom. Okay. I don't, you, you know, if, if you're refinancing a truck to hang on, that's stupid. Okay. That's stupid. Um, and, um, if you got, if you're going to go buy a truck right now and, and get in the business and you're not paying cash for a truck and you can't keep your operating costs way, way, way down where you can haul $2 a mile freight and make money. That's stupid. You know? Um, you, you just have to, you, you have to get out the BSC 9,000 and let the math make those decisions for you. And certainly not asking other people's opinions on Facebook. Right. Well, that segues Mason's <clears throat> comment here. I want an international trans star cab over just out of curiosity. What's your opinion on cab overs? I, I, I mean, what I like to have a cab over is a toy. 
you know, the same way I'd like to have a Corvette. Sure. I'm not going to try to make money with it. Um, cause it's impractical, especially if, if the trans star you're, I'm thinking of, you know, what you're talking about, they look cool as hell, but you can't make any money home freight with them. Um, and again, I mean the, the one, right when I got into the industry about two years in international came out with a flat floor cab over that was fantastic. It had more room in it than a century or Columbia. Um, and you had super tight turning radius and they finally got them riding good. And then basically Schneider and Swift and everybody that was driving cab overs switched to Freightliner and, and put the international cab over out of business. Now they're still, they've got some really cool cab overs over in Europe. Um, uh, Volvo's, Scania's, um, international still making cab overs in like Russia and Argentina. Um, but they just, they just don't have a market here. And so you're not, um, you're not going to get the, again, this is all about practicality of staying in business. Um, you know, <clears throat> you've got to manage risk, you know, um, when, um, when, whenever there's a pro, I, I, what I see, and, and this happened to me, everything's okay as long as everything's okay. Mm -hmm. As long as everything goes all, goes okay, everything's fine. It's not being, it, number one, it's being shocked when something happens. You know, uh, I, I, my team that I dispatched for today had to go repower a load of fireworks because the trailer caught on fire, you know, which could have been a very exciting situation. Um, well, that BCO that was pulling that trailer owned by Landstar, okay, well, he doesn't have a trailer, right? Because it's going to take, like they said, a week or two weeks to fix that trailer. Well, he's got to have a plan if he wants to haul freight because he, he can either sit there two weeks and wait for that one to get fixed or he can get on the list with trailer utilization and try to get one or try to find another uh, repower, you know, but what are you going to do when the shit hits the fan? That's the question. And if you're not prepared for that, um, but you know, you don't have any, you don't have a single tool in a truck. You can't do anything. You haven't spent any time trying to learn. Um, everything that I know about working on trucks is, from experience, from watching Carl being over his shoulder and watching and learning. And okay, I see how he took that apart and I see how he put it back together. And now I can do a lot of that stuff. Now I'm not ready to do an in frame just yet, but <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff on trucks that I can do. And everywhere I go, the bed of my pickup trucks full of tools. Um, and you know, hell, well, let's talk about this is a good segue. I've been trying to exercise a demon out of a Freightliner this week. We've got a, a 06 with a 14 liter. And it's got this weird boost issue that when you hit high gear, the boost goes 28, 10, 22, 14, and then back up in 26 and holds. I've changed. I, I, clean, I took all the EGR Venturi and crossover, took all that apart, cleaned it out. I put a Delta P, uh, pressure sensor on it. I put a boost sensor on it. Um, I put a V-pot on it last night at about 1030. And by the way, if you're a Detroit engineer and you're watching this right now, I hate you. <laughs> and your mama, okay? And your mom, okay? Um, I probably need to but, explain that a little bit. But. Well, the, v, the variable pressure output device has an airline connected to it. Mm -hmm. which runs up to the actuator on the turbo that adjusts the vanes in the variable geometry turbo. Mm -hmm. And they put the son of a bitch right between the engine block and the frame rail, you know? And so there's no room for a oh, wrench. There's no room they, for your hands. When they build that at the factory, it's not a problem. Oh, I know. They drop that right problem. in there. It's already on there. They don't yeah, put it no. on there after it's in the, hmm. that's not their problem. Not a problem. So uh, anyway, you know, and, and, and what's weird about it, is there's no codes. So the ECM's like, hey, man, everything's fine. Everything's perfect. 
no problems. And I'm like, but I have a problem here. And the ECM's like, no, you don't. And we don't have, I, I need to find out why we don't have any check engine chucks in the diesel world. There's a guy on TikTok, check engine chuck. There's another place, some auto, I think it's Royalty Auto Service down in Georgia somewhere. Their diagnostics are amazing. I just sit there and watch, and they got lab scopes, and they're getting out their voltmeters, and, oh, well, I don't know, I'm checking this wire, and I'm looking for this signal. We don't have that in diesel. You can't find anybody that can use a lab scope anymore. Or a voltmeter. Okay. Or, or, or a test light, for that right. matter. So... And that's my frustration because I've downloaded the EGR technician's manual. It's like 130 pages and I'm about to print this some bitch out. Just read it, you know, but I don't, I just, I just, it's so hard for me to understand. Why don't we have that kind of diagnostics? Because what I'm left with is plug the computer in no codes, but I still have this problem, which we're assuming has to be a mechanical problem. So it's getting a turbo put on it as we speak. But, I mean, we're going to end up spending, well, got a bunch of free labor out of it, but probably going to be spending $3,500, and we hope that it'll fix it. Now, let's circle back to what I just said 20 minutes ago, that I'd rather have an EGR 14 liter. This is the first one that has really stumped us like this. Now, Here's a kind of a lesson for you. Diesels run on compression. There's no spark plugs, right? And so the reason that turbo works so well on a diesel is because you're forcing pressurized air into the combustion chamber and you're creating a lot of power using that pressure. Okay. When an engine, which needs fuel and air to run, Gas needs fuel, air, and fire. Diesel needs fuel and air. If you give it fuel and you give it air, it will run. And the compression. More, and compression. Well, and compression, yeah. But the more air you put in it, the more power it's going to make. Well, here's the problem. If you have a boost leak bad enough that it's dumping fuel in there, but it's not getting all of the air that it needs, you will melt shit down. Mm -hmm. You will melt pistons. You will melt turbos. Well, about mm -hmm. a year ago, this truck, I found out, a driver dropped it off, had a massive boost leak. Massive. Well, we found out that the certified professionals at the Detroit shop left the turbo loose. Now, of course, the driver had no idea, you know, that this was a problem. I get in at bobtail, and as soon as I hit the gas, I heard the whoosh, you know, and I'm like, oh, my God, what a massive boost leak. So it's possible that people driving it around with a huge boost leak has damaged the turbo internally, and that's why it's behaving this way. So I'm, I'm assuming here that within the hour I'm going to find out, yeah, it was the turbo. <clears throat> can, but, can, we, go ahead. Can, we, can we go back to, to something here? <clears throat> I want to talk about this right here, okay? <clears throat> this is a big problem in trucking. Okay. You have to understand that businesses have, businesses have a, have a requirement. Okay. And that requirement is what Chris? To make a profit. Right. Now, if what you really, really, really want affects the profit of your business, that's a stupid business decision. See, we're trying to get people to quit making decisions on emotion because you really, really, really want something. What you really, really, really need to want is to make money and keep it and put it in the bank and have it, okay? And if, if this truck, this thing that you want, is going to be anything that's going to keep you from making the maximum profit in the minimum amount of time, that's not helping your business. So you got to decide here. Are you going to be, are you want to be in business or do you want to just be a truck driver going down a road, you know? Right. So this is the, this is the, this is the dichotomy that we deal with here all the time is that you have to understand in this, in, in business, a truck is a tool, no more, no less. Now you may, if you identify with it, that's fine if you can afford to, but if you're again, going back to our market, first time owner operator buying his first truck, 
you need not identify with that truck. You better identify with your wallet. Okay. Right. When your wallet gets to where your identity is good, you can do whatever you want to. But in the meantime, there's a hell of a lot of broke truckers out here right now with big old payments getting something really, 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 really wanted and really, 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 really aren't going to get to keep it because the bank's going to really, 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 really come get it. And you're going to be really, 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 really bankrupt. Really, 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 really quick. Now, I rest, really I rest my case. Well, I wish, I wish, the, I wish there was an aftermarket. And, and, and I, I kind of feel like that's our fault in the industry that we don't have an aftermarket like we do in automotive where um, I, I, I watch a guy took a Hemi, which is a Dodge product, and put it in a square body Chevrolet. Um, but hooked it up to a Holly, uh, engine control system, you know, it, 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 there, there's, there's no Chrysler software running that truck, but it's a Chrysler engine in a Chevrolet truck with a Holly engine, you know, so, um, I wish we had that here, you know, uh, or, 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 or at least, the ability to, but maybe it exists. Maybe, maybe, maybe just nobody knows how to take the diesel laptop and plug it into a truck while we're going down the road and look and see what it's doing. Maybe, it, maybe it's there and we just don't know. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm ready. And I, you're probably not ready to spend that kind of money for me to play with it mm. and figure it out. You know, no. um, it's it's just it's just frustrating because we have to figure out everything on our own, but that's business. You know, if if you're working in a McDonald's and your freezer quits, it probably behooves you to at least understand something about refrigeration, so that at least you're not at the um, at the mercy of a guy that walks in. Hey, I'm a certified refrigeration specialist. Okay. Well, can you take your certified ass over there and fix that freezer? Oh yeah. And then the, then they leave and the freezer doesn't work. Well, you've got to know, you've got to know enough of the vocabulary and the lingo to at least understand how the system works. So you can, you can tell if somebody's full of shit or not, you know, that, but that comes with time, which is again is why we created this program so that you don't have to be a company driver that doesn't know a hubcap from a radiator cap and that just goes and buys a truck. And yesterday I was an employee and today I are a, a owner operator. Mm -hmm. We give you an opportunity <clears throat> to come here for 18 months and let us give you this little by little by little. Watch, watch how we do this. Watch how we interact with the customers. Watch how we interact with the shops. Watch how we do things because there's never a situation unless I, I know and trust the person, I'm never going to walk away from my truck um, and, and tell somebody, hey, I need you to do X and then walk away with the belief that they're A, going to do what they said they're going to do, B, do what I said for them to do because there's been more than once I've had to look at some people and say, who's paying the bill? Well, you are. Well, who does that mean in charge? And then they, their eyes glaze over because they don't understand the fact that I'm now the boss. I'm paying the bill, so you're going to do what I tell you to do. I really don't give a shit what your boss said. I don't care what your company policy is. I don't care what your manager said. You are now my employee for the momentary time that you're going to be working on this truck, and you are, by God, going to do what I tell you to do, or I'm going to take the bitch down the road to somebody that will because I'm in charge. <clears throat> and it's so difficult to be number one, a person that has come from the American education system, God help you. That's, that's been trained for 13 years to be a robot that shuts the hell up and does what they're told to put them in the position of being now a business owner that has to assert authority when that assertion is necessary. That's really difficult. Well, in, in, in the, um, uh, it, we're, we're, we're taught to trust people that have letters behind their name or, <laughs> yeah. or, or frames on the wall that say something like that. 
you know, and you, you go, you go to a doctor and you, you know, you see a medical, you, you kind of think, well, he knows what he's talking about, which may or may not be true by the way, <laughs> but you go to any type of a mechanical shop and then those things on the wall, uh, if, if you let that affect your trust and, and what they're going to do, you're, you're, you're going to find out very, very soon that you're going to be disappointed. One of the, one of the things Chris has says at our orientations, uh, and he says it so well, I don't even know if I can, uh, quote it, but he said, one of the things you're going to learn here is that you have to, you have to understand that you're going to have to lower your expectation of your fellow man. That's exactly what I said. <clears throat> And, and people kind of look at us like, what do you, what do you mean by that? And what, what we mean by that is you can't trust anybody to do anything. And, you know, and, and if you don't trust and verify, you're going to pay a lot of money for stuff that you didn't get, you know? And again, what are we here for, Chris? Make a profit, right? So throwing money away is not profitable. Uh, matter of fact, it, it's, it's not profitable. Hey, let's uh, bring that. I want to, I want to address this. If Rod, if you're still with us, either I misspoke or you misheard or something, but I've got a chart here that I want to answer this question with. Uh, you said that two weeks ago, I said it'd be a $20,000 savings from six to seven. Here's the chart. And if I misspoke, I apologize. But Chris, take the, take the banner down for a second because you can see the rest of it. So these are four trucks, examples of four trucks at three bucks a mile, driving 100,000 miles a year. Truck one gets five miles per gallon, truck six, two, truck seven, truck three, seven, truck four, eight, so on. So truck one would spend sixty thousand dollars in, in fuel. Truck two would save ten. Truck three would save seventeen, and truck four would save twenty-two. That's where the number came from, Rod. So if I misspoke there, I apologize. But this is uh, the difference between a truck getting five and eight, or five and six, or six and eight, or six and seven. That's the difference it, it, that makes in your fuel savings uh, just from one mile per gallon. So anyway, I just want to clear that up. So. <clears throat> Well, I made that full screen so TikTok could see it. Now I can't figure out how to help. Oh, there we go. We uh, we try to be accurate here, and if I misspoke, I do apologize. So, but thanks for thanks for calling me on on it. So, <clears throat> all right. So, what else we got going on? Uh, <clears throat> let me look at uh, a couple of TikTok comments here. I would drive for you guys, but I don't have any experience driving. Been a tech for ten years. Well. <laughs> Harman, <laughs> Harman, whoop! Uh, that does not make you much different than any other truck driver <laughs> I've run into. Uh, but unfortunately, <clears throat> uh, Landstar, the carrier that we're leased to, requires one year of verifiable over-the-road experience, which you can go get, you know, and which you need. I mean, we don't—we're not a trucking school, okay? We you you need to come here and understand how to operate a truck and how to do all the things. You know, we we teach business here, not trucking. So it is imperative that you have the education or the experience when you get here. So, sorry, I got <clears throat> my phone because one of our drivers is calling me. Apparently, they don't understand. We do a podcast on Friday nights at eight o'clock. <clears throat> um, well, and just real quick, you know, for TikTok, YouTube, if, if you're interested in trucking, we believe that it is a fantastic uh, opportunity uh, of all the industries. Do not fall victim to these scams where they well, hey, we'll pay for your school. Just save up the money, pay cash for the school, and don't be a slave to a carrier. Okay. Um, go get one-year verifiable experience. doesn't matter where. Preferably someone that will train you on a manual. I know they're harder to find, but they are out there. Do not ever let anyone sucker you into getting an automatic transmission restriction on your license. That is immoral. It ought to be illegal. No chance of that happening. Uh, do not get an automatic transmission restriction because it makes you a slave to these big corporations because they're the only ones you can drive for. Rest my case. Um, Somebody asked a question, how much can one truck gross with Landstar? It, look, Landstar rates aren't different than any other rates, okay? You, you, one truck can gross whatever the, the, the ability of that truck owner or truck driver, whoever's getting the loads and driving the truck and manages their time and negotiates their, their, their deals. It has nothing to do with Landstar zero. Okay. Right. The only thing good at Landstar is we can control our cost. Okay. But the revenue side rates are rates. It doesn't matter where you are. The rates aren't changed by Landstar or nor are they set by Landstar. So it's, um, I don't know how to answer that question. Everybody thinks that they can come to Landstar and all of a sudden work gets easier. 
I can, I can work less. I can make more. I can get it. that. That's just not true. That is absolutely not true. The only reason we're at Landstar is because Landstar gives us the flexibility to run our business the way we want to. Okay. And we have no ceiling. Uh, we have no rules that we, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that everybody starts the same way here. Okay. Nobody gets an advantage over anybody else. It's just a level playing field. It's the free market. And that's what we want. Uh, we didn't come here because Landstar has better rates. We came here because Landstar has a better opportunity because they control costs through 11, 12, 13, 14,000 BCOs who they have collective bargaining power for. And we get absolutely beautiful fuel discounts and tire discounts. And we don't have to worry about dealing with uh, brokers that you think are taking 50% of the load. The, bro the agents we deal with get 7.5% of the load. We know that. Yep. There's exactly. no transparency is not a problem here. We know exactly. And we can see the freight bill. So that's the, why, the reason to come to Landstar. Um, you know, there are people at Landstar that are, that do $50,000 a year. There's people at Landstar that do $300,000 a year. Okay. The only difference is how hard one wants to work and how well they manage their time. So I'd say, I'd say <laughs> there's a handful doing 500,000 a year. You know, it's, well, yeah. of course there's all these outliers, but I mean, what, what you've got to understand <clears throat> is that if you succeed at Landstar, it's your fault. If you fail at Landstar, still your fault. It's just a, it's, it's just a, basically it's a payment processing system. Agents book loads. We haul them. Landstar distributes the money to everybody. The agent gets a piece. We get a piece. Landstar gets a piece. I did a TikTok this past week where I went through the month of May and we averaged $3.28 per loaded mile with 16.8% deadhead. Now, of course, there was a bunch of people in the comment section that, that can't comprehend those numbers, but there were people that could, and I was glad to see them there. But I'm, I'm looking, I see the comments, I see the TikTok posts, I see the Facebook posts and the Instagram posts and the YouTube videos, and oh my God, this is terrible, and somebody's got to do something, and we need a guaranteed rate. Well, y'all like to throw shade at us because we're leased to a carrier and we're not real owner operators because we don't have our own numbers. <laughs> well, what's your loaded rate per mile? Because I sure I know exactly what mine is to the penny. And then, of course, I've also just you know stated that our cost per mile of operation is a dollar fifty-eight, which may have come down a penny or so as fuel has come down some. But the last time I did those numbers, uh, I came <clears> up at a dollar fifty-eight. You know, well, that can't be all your expenses. No, that's literally all of our expenses, all of our insurance, all of our fuel, all of our maintenance, paying our drivers, our payroll cost, my salary, his salary, buck fifty-eight. So three twenty-eight. Well, well, my salary is is, well, uh, is that plus everything that's left over, but. <laughs> But it's I'm not cheap, okay. It's but look, look, let me let me can I address that? Go what, ahead. What is a real what is a real what is a real owner operator? What what is that? So, so you have this status that you're real owner, but you broke. I mean, I so I, I so I'm gonna pay triple for my insurance. I'm gonna deal with these uh, abusive brokers that everybody's crying about. Factoring okay. companies. Okay. Factoring companies, yeah. All this stuff you 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 deal with, and and you're 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 a better, you're a better bit, your your business is better than mine because I'm leased to a carrier, but yet my cost of doing business is half of yours, and our margin is triple yours. So I mean, I, I have no problem. My identity was not in my truck when I'm a driver. My identity is not in my label as a fleet owner. Okay. I could give a rat's ass less about whether I had DOT numbers or not DOT numbers. Listen, if I thought it was in my interest to have a DOT number, we'd have them. We'd have a bunch of them. Okay. But well, yeah. I've yet, I've yet to prove that that's the best thing for me because it's not my ego. It's not my identity. I don't care that I have, that I'm not a real truck driver. 
It makes no difference to me. I'll tell you what I am real though. I'm really, really good at making money. Okay. I'm really, really, really good business person. All right. So, and, and, and oh, by the way, you guys at Landstar, they, they, they're begging for drivers all day. I had one call me today. Okay. Had one mm. of your guys call me today. Okay. He's worked for you for one month. He made $30,000 in gross to you and you paid him $688. Okay. <laughs> Shame on you. 1099. Okay. No written contract, nothing at all. And now the guy wants to come here. I'm not going to bring him here because I don't hire operators or BCOs. But, you know, that's the problem you guys have. It's got nothing to do with your status and how good a truck driver you are. You're horrible, horrible at business. And that's why you can't keep drivers. So, yep. I, I can't imagine being on this side. Having been an owner operator, having been a BCO, having made that transition from company driver to owner operator, I, I mean, I can't imagine doing it just just walking through that door right now. That ter that the, the thought of that terrifies me. And so when I see people who obviously have no business experience, it is it is it's so so apparent that. They, and, and uh, listen, it's not their fault to an extent. I mean, I'm going to say maybe 25% your fault because all of the, in, all of the world's known information is available to you in your pocket right now. So if you, if you're ignorant for long, it's your fault. Okay. <clears throat> but my dad, I, my dad graduated high school in 1957 and he had a business math class in 1957 they were taught typing in the 50s they were taught what did i get in 1994 nothing nothing i came out of high school <laughs> barely literate uh um, no, 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 no. you're getting away man that, that's not true you well, you're you're very literate you no. spell your, your spelling is good your grammar is good you had to get that somewhere Okay. Well, you didn't, you didn't, I we were had, born with it. No, I, I, <clears> I had, well, here's, here's the big picture. I had a couple, like maybe three throughout the whole time, really fantastic teachers. There you go. One, one <clears> really <throat> good teacher with grammar who I could now still 30 years later, diagram sentences in my sleep. She'd be a, so proud of you. He was a diagramming right. sentence Nazi. Yeah. Um, and I had one really good algebra teacher in eighth grade. But what I mean by that. I don't mean lit literate that I couldn't read. What I mean by that is when I walked out the door, I had almost no idea how the world really worked, but was <laughs> told, well, hey, precious, you know everything you need to know. Here's a, here's a, here's a, a, a diploma that says so. Another one of those frame on the wall. Right. Which somebody in West Virginia to homeschool, you have to show up a copy of your diploma. We've always had to use Karen's because I have no idea where mine's at. You know, <laughs> I, I, have, I have no clue. Um, but it's it, it to to me it feels like that we should at least be giving people some foundational understanding, whether or not you get into business or not, because not everybody's <clears> going to get in business and not everybody's going to survive in business. I, but I'm, I'm going to step on this a little bit because I don't want to go there, but, but in my opinion, okay, there were there at, at some point in the public school system and typically in high school or certainly in middle school, there a decision is made by the powers that be, and that would be the counselors and the administrators that this student has the potential to go to college or not. Okay. And at that point in time, there's some, there's some influence maybe, maybe passed down about whether or not there should be some vocational education here versus higher math. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause the idea there was going to be college prep and you go to college and you get the, the, the degree, the professional things you want to, or you go to vocational school, probably not going to go to college and you're going to be in the trades. OK, well, you and I both know now 
that the, the college route, the professional degree thing, unless you're going to be a doctor, lawyer, Indian chief, that's a pretty much a waste of your money. Okay. Yeah. 100%. And, and the trade school thing would be the way to go. But the problem is we haven't, we haven't made that adjustment yet in, in the, uh, in the public education system to where we're still trying to prep people for college, uh, for college. And, and the, 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 the there's, there's no people, listen, there's a lot of people coming out of college that have no, have absolutely no common sense. Can't, can't do anything you're talking about. Functionally illiterate. Okay. Right. Really, really good at, you know, at passing tests, art appreciation, but you know, couldn't find her ass in both hands, you know? So, um, but that's, that's, that's the world we're in. Like we can't do that. You were I, talking about something about ago about, you know, you can change your, um, I, I ran across a saying not too long ago. It said something like, something like reading can seriously damage your ignorance. You know, <laughs> everybody has the opportunity. All right. Yeah. This, this guy today that wanted to, wanted me to hire him. Okay. You know, I, I gave him the, I said, look, here, here's a, here's an opportunity to find out what we do. Okay. You know what he did? Hmm. So you don't, so you're not hiring a driver. No, not hiring a driver. Well, what do you do? I mean, I said, well, here's, here's, here's how to find out. Here's the mm-hmm. website. Here's a couple of podcasts. Why don't you just take the time and do the research? And I, I can guarantee, I mean, first of all, the conversation was over, you know, mm-hmm. you know, he, 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 he's, he already made a decision to go work for a BCO with no contract as a 1099 and no, and, and no, not, nothing, nothing that prevents uh, him being abused by this BCO. And yet he's, he's here going to do the same thing over again, just for a different one. You know, what's he learned from that? Do you think he's learned anything? No, he's not. He's just going to go do it over again. Um, anyway, it's, it's kind of sad. I, I would like for my kids, and I've told them my, my oldest is about to be 17, and then we got the middle one's 13, and the little one's nine. I said, guys, go learn a trade. Hell, I'll pay for it. Now, what I'm not going to do is pay $60,000 for you to go get a degree in, you know, gender studies. Okay, that's not happening. Okay? That's 100% not happening. You want to do that, you're going to pay for it yourself. Pronoun. uh, Yeah. Never mind. Uh, But you want to learn how to be a welder, truck driver, equipment operator? Something that you could learn in a year for, well, hell, Kaylee found some cooking class in Ireland and it was like 12 grand. And I'm like, okay, well, in about two years, you're going to be old enough to wait tables. You could probably make a thousand to $1,500 a week as a really good server. If you'll hustle and bust your ass and you can live here. I won't charge you rent. You could (laughs) in 12 weeks, you could save up enough money to go to Ireland and take the cooking class. And then it's paid for and it's done. And now you have that experience forever. And then if you want to beat me, she's a champion fiddle player. If she wanted to pursue music professionally for the rest she, of the world, it's a violin. She could okay. always, Hey, I know how to weld, you know, if I'm in yeah. a pinch and, I and, what, weld and, and, and what are we, what do we not have right now? Okay. Diesel mm-hmm. mechanics. All right. I mean, Machinist. all the trades, but I, listen, I'm built. I'm adding a, yeah, trust me when I tell you this, we need help in the trades. Okay. <laughs> you know, I wrangle these guys all day long. All right. So, you know, what we don't need is another philosopher. You know, what oh, we need are people God. that want to, you know, let's just get back to answering questions. Okay. This is one. I, I want to address this one right here. Can we go ahead? <laughs> is one benefit of Landstar your ability to pick your own loads versus being dispatched and having the ability to say yes or no when leased onto a different carrier? Yes and no. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, slow that down. For because uh, isn't, there, isn't there like three questions in there? Is one benefit of lane start ability to pick your own loads? Yes. Versus being dispatched. Okay. Well, so that could be leased to a carrier that has dispatching or maybe a s- dispatch service. He's talking about forced dispatch. That's what he's talking about. Okay. And then or having least- the ability to say yes or no when leased onto a different carrier. Okay. So let me, let me, this is a very, very, very often asked question and it's very misunderstood. Here's the way I'm going to answer this. Okay. You can, if it, your trucking business, I'm assuming you own a truck and you're, you're going to come to Landstar and you're going to bring your truck here and you're going to do business with Landstar. 
Understand from the get go that you're not an employee. You don't work for Landstar. You work for you. Correct. And Landstar is a, is now your partner, your strategic partner. You have the ability to come here and look at a load board and compete with me and fourteen thousand other people for the loads. If you're good enough to get them, okay. If your reputation is good enough that they'll give them to you, and if your cost of operation is, is low enough that you can afford to take it. So the answer to that first question is that. The next question is, yes, you can choose the load. You can choose not to do the load. That's up to you, all right? Because you're the one that's going to pick that load and negotiate for it, and, and, and you're going to have to understand that the process of picking a load involves negotiation, okay? It involves you making the phone calls and finding out that that load's been covered and it's already there and making another phone call, making another phone call, and you're going to get really aggravated because Landstar says I can come here and do that, and I had to make 50 phone calls to get a load. That's what's going to happen, okay? All right? So if you're willing to do that, yes, there's a lot of money to be made here, okay? But it's not easy, and it's not going to be what you think. We're going to come over here, and that's the load I want. I'm going to go haul that load, and if I can't haul that Landstar, screwing me. So that's the answer to that question, okay? Did I do a pretty good job on that or not? I think so. All right. I think it. so. Um, I, I was just I'm, – I'm doing something out of curiosity. So I'm going to go to yesterday. I'm in my email account right now. And I want to, because I'm good, just give me a second, bear with me, because I want to talk about this ability to say no. Okay. Easiest way to do it would be, I, I, I received in my email 119 load alerts yesterday in my email, 119. I probably booked, what was yesterday? I probably yeah. booked three loads yesterday because I pretty much had everybody booked. So I, if, if in this example, okay, if I received 119 load alerts and I booked three loads, I said no 116 times. Do it every day, right? I, I say no to lots of stuff without ever having to say it to somebody's face, right? Um. I, I'm scrolling the board. I'm looking for stuff, and I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Maybe. Oh, I like that call. Ah, pickup time doesn't work. You know. So yes, you absolutely get to say yes and no. The problem is, you get to say no. Right. That's the big problem. That's where y'all get in trouble. It's because y'all say there's a lot of times you say no too much. You say no, well, I'm not, I mean, that load's $3 a mile, not three fifty. That load is this, or that load is going here, and that load's going there. Well, I know that today I booked a load, I think, for $1,000. But the load that I did the day before was $2,000. Well, I can't, I mean, I have my parameters that I like to be in, I want to do $1,450 a day. <coughs> Excuse me. I know that a truck can run six or 650 miles a day. But there's times that I say yes to things today that I would have said no to yesterday. And there's times that I say, oh, please, God, anything, right? I mean, that happens. Um, nobody can manage your time better than you can, all right? Nobody can waste your time as good as you can either, right? So the, the draw and the allure is, well, hey, I, I get to pick all my loads and I'm in charge, which is 100% true. The problem comes in when <clears throat> every truck driver I've ever met Always tells me, man, I, I just wish they'd give me a pre-plan. Uh-huh. Liar. Because I give them pre-plans. I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do with all this? <laughs> Plan it out. You know, because that's the big struggle. When when we bring people, now that we have this graduated process of phase one and two and three and four, when I'm getting you in phase one, I have to reprogram you and get you to understand that there are all of these people that you have to put in a higher position than yourself. You need to communicate with the agent so they can communicate with the customer. 
You need to let people know where you are and when you're going to be there, which means you're going to have to get our friend, the BSE 9000. Here you go to uh, TikTok. You can see a copy of it too. You got to get your friend the BSE 9000, and you've actually got to plan things because I can book you the best loads you've ever seen. I'm really, really good at it. Doesn't do any good if you can't run them. And so when people come in here with zero experience, ever done anything like that, and they've only ever been here's a load, and here's a load, and here's another load, and now they have to plan themselves, they have to put uh, accountability. Somehow, you, somehow you're going to have to build accountability into the decisions that you're making every day. And that's where they really struggle is because they don't want to be held accountable, yet they want to hold everybody else accountable, which is kind of weird, you know? Um, let's deal with this one because we get this one all the time. Drop hey, Chris and Larry, I hear a lot of horror stories with drop and hook loads at Landstar when it comes to picking up a trailer, what has been your experience? Well, <clears throat> well, I'm going to go to the data. Think, think of all of the restaurants you've eaten at in your life. The ones that you remember the most are the ones that probably were the worst experiences. Okay. And it fogs your, um, impression of how that, you know, that the historical data of that was, yeah. Every once in a while we pick up a, a trailer, that has a problem. Okay. Look, there's a BCO today picking up trailer and some sit on fire. Okay. So, uh, but again, we, we, we're running 12 trucks right now. We, you know, we're, we're running 12 trailers at a time. We do a ton of drop and hook freight. Okay. Yeah. Once in a while we have to deal with a flat tire or we have to deal with a light out or an ABS light out. Okay. But it's not enough for us to give up all the drop and hook freight that we do because of the occasional, um, time that something happens. Now there are people who could come here and get so upset about that, that the first thing they knew they're going to go buy their own trailer, which is fine. Okay. If, if you've got the money and you can justify it, you'll get an extra 7% for doing that. But trailers aren't free and trailers aren't free of maintenance. Okay. So, um, again, if, if I'm, <laughs> Let me remind you guys, I've been in business since 1977. Someone on Facebook called me a pompous ass. So I guess I'll be one, <laughs> but I've been doing this for a long time. Okay. Uh, and I've been doing, uh, I've been in business for, for a long time. If I knew that having my own trailers would be more beneficial to me, we would have them, but I don't do have them because they're not okay. They're not, they're best to break even best to break even. And, and even with that, there's the risk is it, 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 there's no, and we, and we lose all of our drop and hook freight. Okay. One of most of our best customers are dropping hook freight. Everything I made a million dollars on in five years was dropping hook freight. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, no, I don't, you know, it, 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 it's, it's overblown. People make a big deal out of it because it pisses them off that they got a trailer that they had to fix, but they don't think about, they went 10 or 12 in a row and didn't get one, you know? So, uh, I wouldn't, we, I wouldn't let, let that uh, be your, uh, deciding factor. So we did 27 loads last week. 13 of them were preloaded. There you go. Almost half. Mm -hmm. So we'd have lost that business last week. And what would we do last week? Three something a mile, three, three dollars a mile. Well, let me look. Um, let me go to the BSC 9,000. <laughs> Three oh two. And our and our and our cost per mile is about a buck fifty eight. So that's our margin. Nineteen so, percent deadhead. The deadhead was a little high, but still three bucks a mile. Yeah. So um yeah. Uh be interested to see what the rate on the drop and hook freight was versus the non drop and hook freight. Silver wind on TikTok says acting like business experience happens without failure and error is a really pompous way to look at it. No, I've never said that. Um everything that I've learned has been because of failure and error. And and a lot of what Larry has learned has been because of failure and error. What would be nice, what would be nice is if we had some fundamental math skills to go with it that's supposed to be given out in school and it's not we're not getting like like <clears throat> you know logic and math and 
what, that's, what that's are, not happening. What our program's about is is eliminating that. You know, taking our experiences uh, that you're talking about and prevent keeping you from having those failures, and 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 learning from the errors. You know, you can learn from what we've done. Uh, that's the whole benefit of what we do here. You come and you drive one of our trucks, you act like you're driving your own truck and you learn with our risk financially, not yours. And then once you've been here for 18 months and you've experienced all this and you've, you, you know, you, you learn how we do business and you go get your own truck and you don't make all those mistakes with your truck that you probably made with my truck. That's the whole reason we do what we do. So if that makes me a pompous ass, I'll wear that badge proudly. So. It's yeah. I mean, the, the, listen. Now, guys, now you're now you're being put down because here's the guy. We don't touch anything under five bucks. Well, so your three hundred two sucks in his opinion. Okay, we shouldn't move our trucks because it wasn't five bucks. We should have just parked them and made no money because we weren't getting five bucks. Well, which could be true if you're not our hauling co- general our, freight in a dry van. And if our cost per mile was three dollars, we probably would have to do that. But since our cost per mile is a buck fifty-eight, again, this is this is this is why I this is why I'm not very good at this because I can't stand morons in social media. Well, and you know, it it just listen if, if you're. It doesn't have to be – if you're getting five, six, seven, eight bucks a mile, I don't have a hat on, but hats off to you. Congratulations. But what we're seeing right now, it's May – it's June 2nd of 2023. I just saw a, uh, a, a TikTok today. Somebody's talking about 85 cent a mile. Oh, my God, the spot market's crashed. Someone posted in one of the Landstar Facebook groups this week. It might have been Landstar hating Landstar. Basically wanting to know, where's all the contract freight? And my response was, well, it's being called by the people that did not leave the contract freight to rot when the scout, the, the, when the, um, when the spot market was so crazy. Because we had conversations during 2020, 21, and 22 that we wanted to make sure that we were, as a company, serving these agents that had contract freight that wasn't paying as as well uh, and, and took public ridicule because we were servicing customers that weren't paying $5 a mile. Well, guess who's hauling all that stuff now? Guess who, when I pick up this phone, I say, hey, it's Chris. I don't, it, or they'll see my number. Hey, what are you doing? Well, what do you got? What do you need? <clears throat> I get those phone calls all week because we spent two or three years building those relationships that if they're in a pickle, they'll call me. Hey, do you have a truck here? Uh, yeah, and I'll get them there somehow. I'll make it happen. So you cannot just assume that you are going to compete with me on my level. I've been around Landstar since 2014. I've got relationships and I've got experience. I've got the, what what do you say? Failure and error. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I got a truckload of that shit, you know? You got medals for that shit. I do, you know? <clears throat> and so that enables me to look at a situation and go, well, that's tempting, but, you know, or it's just an outright no, you know? And there are times that, of course, oh, my God, I don't know if I told you this. So one in the Landstar system, for those of you who don't know, you can check a box that says publish the number to the to the agents or not. 
Well, it had been unchecked and I had an issue where we actually lost a load last week because they couldn't, there was some kind of error problem. They couldn't get a hold of us. And the PC that, well, you, you ought to check that never again, <laughs> never again. No. No. Uh, ah, uh, uh, name Igor have load for you. $800. Mm -hmm. No, 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 Igor. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate the call, buddy. But no, um, God, they wore my ass out for two days. And I, and I had forgot. I'm like, why all of a sudden am I getting like a hundred? Y'all, no shit. A hundred cold calls a day. My phone just ring and ring and ring and ring and ring. Well, I got to answer them because what if, what if, it, what if one of my guys have a problem? What if the agent needs a hold of me? And it was, oh, have load for you. No, you don't. Okay. You do not. No, thank you. I'll pass. So there, somebody. I mean, I I know that you guys think that a buck fifty eight a mile is 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 not it's, it's not doable, and that and that we're, if at three hundred two we're not making any money. Or somebody pointed out that with deadhead, it's actually two sixty nine. But remember something: in twenty twenty one, our debt our our cost per mile was still a buck fifty eight. Right. When things change and and the rates go back up, our cost per mile is still a buck fifty eight. Right. So the point we're trying to make is we are profitable at a time where most people are not. Most people are losing money. A lot of people are getting out of the industry because they can't stay here. And we can stay here and make a profit. And this market, probably the worst it's ever been, especially in, recently for a lot of you guys. And so it, we're not bragging that, that that's what it is. We're just saying that's what it is. That's what allows us to survive. That's what allows us to be profitable Right. In, a, in, a, in a time when, when most people are not. And then when things change and everybody's making big money again, look, guess how much we're making then, okay? So, um, you know, and another thing is we're, we have a volume game. Oh, we get 12 trucks, okay? I'm getting ready to add two more. And so um, the dollar fifty eight, by the way, doesn't, it's because it includes everything, all right? So anyway. Oh, here's one on t uh, <clears throat> on TikTok, Jimmy. True, this all depends on if capitalism is king. Well, number one, I hate that word because capitalism uh, means four different things to four different people. Uh, but he says, with the destabilizing dollar, what's the future? Good. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Better. Is, is the dollar destabilizing? Well, yeah, but that's not new. It's It's been that way for a long time. Um, the dollar is not a, a, a good store of value uh, and, and really hasn't been for a long time. Um, but let's talk, instead of using the word dollar, let's just talk about a means of exchange because that's what currency is. OK, doesn't matter what you call it. You could call it yen or dollars or francs or euros or, or pesos or, or furs or, or salt. Fur. Yeah. Um, or oil. But we, for the first time in all of human history, we have the opportunity to begin to trade right now with currencies that are not created at the whim of a politician. We're not there yet as far as it being practical, but it's coming. And so if you kind of wash away all of the distractions, especially using words like capitalism, socialism, all this garbage if you will go find someone to serve, if you will exploit, oh, what's your line, Larry? Exploit. Find what find what makes you. Your uniqueness. Your uniqueness. Exploit, exploit it in the service of others. Exploit your uniqueness in the service of others. If you will put someone else's needs ahead of your own, Zig Ziglar says, said you can have anything you want if you'll help enough other people get what they want right but we we are we we are living in a very very selfish self-centered society 
probably more so than any, well, not among all, all the first world nations. Everything is me, 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 me. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Well, I have to know and understand using the calculator that at $1.59, I'm good. At two dollars, I'm good. At two fifty, I'm great. At three dollars, I'm awesome. Okay. At a dollar fifty-seven, I have a problem. My problem is not your problem. If if you need to move at a buck fifty-seven, I'm well. I, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Or I can try to lower my cost somehow. But it takes all the emotion out of it. Um, and, and that's why I prefer being at a carrier that has a system in place where I can pull stuff up on this screen right here. And the numbers are there. And if it meets my criteria, I pick up this phone. I call them. And if it all works out, so book it. Send me an email. Send me a rec confirmation. I will send the truck. The truck will haul the load. We will scan the paperwork. Come Wednesday, you're going to get paid, and we're going to get paid. Everybody's happy. I don't have – we have zero hours spent in billing. Zero. We have zero hours spent, well, other than printing the permit out of the, you know, going on the Internet and pushing the button to print the permits. We have zero hours in compliance. We have zero hours in sales, and we have zero hours in insurance. And zero money in factoring. 100%. And very, very low money in insurance. So until somebody mm. comes up with a better way for me, a better and more efficient way for me to connect with customers, people that need freight haul, I cannot see, based on this guy, why we should do what we do anywhere else. Now, two things. If you're new to Blue Ribbon and you're new to what we're doing, neither one of us, and I'll, well, I'll speak for myself. I assume Larry shares this. We have zero interest in just moving freight. I have, I have absolutely zero desire to go get trucks and trailers just for the sake of hauling freight and hiring drivers to put in the trucks. The only reason that we do. And you, you question whether or not I would, I don't want to do that. No, I'm just, I'm speaking for myself. You, okay. you can echo. <clears throat> we do what we do because of the, the, the training and mentoring program to, to, right. to give people the opportunity to become an operators. Because but I have because, no desire to just you, haul freight and hire people off the street. If you help enough other people get what they want, guess what you get? Exactly. Now, if, if, if you don't understand this and you'd like to know more, we've got a two day weekend coming up in August that you can come and spend with us and we'll lay all this out for you. We'll talk you through every, we'll, we'll show you everything we do, why we do it, how we do it. So that you can build your business model at a low cost of operation. So that you can stay in business in 2023 when everybody else is going out. And you'll be here in 2024 and 2025 when rates get back up and everybody's fat and happy again. You'll still be there. You won't be one of the people that have had to have their truck repossessed. And you're now a company driver for Swift. And, you know, you, you know, it, 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 it but again, you know, reading uh, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, what was my quote? I just said, I forgot what it was. <laughs> Educating yourself, um, is really hard on ignorance. So if a reading can seriously damage your ignorance, so education yeah. training, coming and getting the information can seriously damage your ignorance. So, uh, it, it, go, go to our website www.blueribbonlogistics.com slash events slash 2020 reset 2023 mm -hmm. and sign up. Um, we sold out last year. We expect to again this year. 
uh, go ahead and get your seat reserved. Come down, spend a weekend with us, and we will teach you everything about this in business of trucking, business in general. Uh, you'll network with everybody else that's there. And we've got some special guests. We, we are, we are going to announce one of them tonight. And that is Rocky with North Florida MD Alignment is going to be there. He's going to arrive on Thursday and leave on Sunday. So if you need alignment on your truck or some type of suspension work on your truck, come to the event, leave your truck outside. Rocky can work on it while you're inside the event. And so um, makes it convenient for you to get a quality uh, alignment from, a, from, a, from one of the best MD alignment guys there are in the country. So we've got some other ones that we're going to announce as we go along, but that's, that's one we can announce tonight because I firmed it up yesterday. So, um, Chris, you got anything to add to that? I don't. Uh, well, this question always comes up. Is the 302 a mile your 65% or is that before the split? That is before the split. That's what we call Landstar books. That's the gross number. Um, we, we don't, um, we don't, we know that we get about 72% of that on average, not 65. Um, but because the access orals and, and the, the fluctuation of fuel and some fuel surcharges are contract rate and, and they suck and some are a market rate. Um, we talk in, um, we, we talk in, um, in the gross numbers, because that's, that's what the customer's paying. Right. Um, and it doesn't really matter because if you have your own numbers and your own authority, well, you have to pay for your insurance and factoring and all that other stuff too. No differently. We do. We just, it, we just, it, it's covered by the percentage that Landstar. We pay, on. we pay one person instead of 14 or 15 other different people for the same services. Yeah. Um, but you know, again, we, a dollar 58 is all of our costs, all of them, including the driver. Um, and so, yeah, at a dollar 59, we're profitable, not much, but we are profitable at a buck 59. And so we're probably averaging to the truck money, probably two ten, two Oh five 205 is probably two, what we're ever two seventeen, two seventeen. Um, I mean, if you took the 328 for the month of May, it was 328, right? So that's 328 times one. Yeah, it's two, two, 236. 236. Yeah. Okay. So minus 158. That's a 78 cent per mile profit. Again, it's not great, but we're not losing money. Right. We got, we got, we got 11, 12 drivers out here making 80 grand a year learning how to do this. Um, that's what we're really here to do. We're not, we're not really a trucking company. We're an educational company. Right. Now the driving the trucks, what pays everybody. So, uh, the most important people, the drivers are making 75, 80 grand right now in 2021. Those guys are making 80 to a hundred. So that's who, that's who we really want to make sure gets paid. Uh, I have to pay Chris to keep him happy and then I get what's left over. So, um, it, uh, you know, it, it, it works for us. You know, it might not work for everybody, but it works for us. So, um, but anyway, we're, uh, not only are we not going home and sending people home and parking trucks, we're expanding. So, yeah, if you can, if you can be profitable in the worst time in history of trucking, uh, <laughs> I, I, even if it's just a few pennies, uh, that's not a bad thing. Okay. Uh, right. Cause the, the alternative is what park your truck and go home. Um, you know, you lease a truck and you're paying seven, eight, 900 bucks a week. And now you can't make that payment anymore. I'll take what we do. Absolutely. Well, um, I do have an announcement. Uh, Larry is going to be in uh, Vegas next weekend. And so I have wrestled up a, uh, a, a host, a co-host for next week, Justin Martin, the bearded one, uh, from what the truck, uh, freight waves podcast is going to join me and be my co-host next week. So I'm looking forward to that, getting to know Justin a little bit. Um, find out maybe if, has he ever thought about spiking Dooner's coffee with some like Valium, you know, cause he, he gets a little wound up on, on their show. 
Um, so Justin will be joining me next week. Uh, we'll be live at eight again. I'm, I'm actually looking to shut this down a little bit early so I can walk up on the hill and catch the remnants of the birthday party. My niece made some homemade cupcakes that look just fantastic. And I'm hoping those ravenous teenagers haven't eaten them all and left me at least one. They'll make you fat, man. You don't need those. Leave those well, alone. Just one. Just Push one. It's lemonade, lemonade strawberry. Okay. Like they're some kind of lemon strawberry and they, they look fantastic. Um, <clears throat> so with that, we're going to shut her down. Uh, we'll see you guys back here next week. Go to the website, check everything out. Blue ribbon logistics.com. Those of you on TikTok, we've got a hundred and this is episode 164. Um, if you have questions, they can all be answered. Go back, especially to 49 and work your way forward. That's when Larry joined the first 48, just me on my own. You can go listen to that too. You got plenty of time. You're just driving trucks. Um, you got anything else to close with? No, get your seat for the, for the events, uh, um, reserved. Yep. And, um, I won't see you next weekend, but Chris and this other dude will, if they do a good enough job, maybe I can just replace me. Okay. Yeah. So that'd be okay with me. So, yeah, I think the audience likes having you around. Though. Eh, yeah. No, I'm a pompous ass. They'll get over it. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll All see right, everybody. Have, have a good one.